Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about plotting horror, featuring the most horrifying thing of all, naked nails. It's October, and Halloween is almost upon us, so in honor of this spooky holiday, we're going to be talking about two horror-related things. So this week is going to be plotting horror, and next week is going to be writing horror scenes. So before this video, I recommend going and watching my general plotting video. I'll link that up in the card for you. The reason why is beca because what we're going to do in this video is take that and apply it to horror. So what makes a horror story a horror story? There are several things that go into that that coalesce into what we would recognize as horror. Primarily, horror must be frightening. If it's not scary, it's not really horror. So how do we make a story frightening? The primary way to do this is to make safety the goal. So what that means is at the climax of the story, safety is achieved. So let's break that down into the five phases that we talked about in our plot structure video. That's introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. During the introduction or exposition phase, we establish the status quo of safety and how that safety is being threatened. So for example, think of the movie Halloween. So major spoilers for the Halloween plot in uh, this video, but it's a really old movie, so if you like horror, you've probably already seen it. The movie begins when Michael Myers is being transferred to another facility and he escapes. We are also introduced to Laurie, and that's who Michael terrorized on his previous killing spree, and that's what got him imprisoned in the first place. Another important part of this section for the Halloween movie is that Laurie expresses concerns about Michael's escape to her daughter and to her husband, and they both dismiss her. They still feel safe. It's important during this stage of the plot that majority of the characters don't feel that their safety is threatened. Next, we have our rising action. This is the part during a horror plot that the killer starts going around on their killing spree. Or maybe if it's a monster story, the monster gets closer and closer to their target. In Halloween, this is where Michael stalks and kills all of his new victims in this particular movie. At some point during this rising action phase, the characters must realize that their safety is threatened. The characters will then make a choice to try to return to safety. They might do this by running, hiding, or an attempt to attack the killer and take them out. Think fight, flight, or freeze. When a person is threatened, they will choose either to fight back, to run, or they will become overwhelmed and choose to not do anything. The characters in the cast of a horror plot should have one of these three reactions, and those reactions are going to determine exactly what happens during the climax. During the climax, typically one of the characters will choose fight, and either by themselves or with help from other cast members, they will take out the antagonist. Depending on the exact flavor of horror you're going for, maybe your antagonist is killed, maybe they're arrested, or maybe they're just incapacitated. Do you want the antagonist to have an opportunity to come back, or do you want the antagonist to be gone and the role play to move on to a brand new antagonist, or end altogether? The answer to this will determine exactly what the climax should be. In Halloween, there's a confrontation with Michael where he gets trapped inside of a burning house, and it's assumed that he burned up in the house. If you're playing the villain or the antagonist in a group horror roleplay, you'll need to be willing to have your character die at this point if that's what the rest of the roleplay wants to have happen. For more about playing villains, see my roleplaying villains video. I'll link that up in the card. Next in our structure, we have the falling action. This is where we wrap up all of those threads that we might have started that were in conjunction with the main plot. Any romances either need to be determined that they have been established and are continuing, or they're going to break up, for example. Or maybe some of the characters that survived the antagonist can't handle living in this place anymore and they need to move away. How much or how little amount of falling action you get in the roleplay depends entirely upon how these sort of like side plots were happening and, and how many of them were going on that you need to tie up. It's going to depend completely on what is going on for your particular roleplay. 
This might even be entirely skipped depending on exactly how things are going. Horror is all about building that tension. So sometimes the sort of long drawn playing out of those side plots just isn't really tense enough for the horror role play and you might just not want to do them at all. Horror is all about fear and tension. So the relief of that tension might not be something you want to indulge in for your horror role play. Last we have the resolution. In horror, this is where we typically set up either that the antagonist survived and is coming back, or there is a new antagonist on the horizon. Decide which fits your roleplay better and if it's going to continue at all. If the roleplay is not going to continue, this is the moment where we see safety is achieved in perpetuity. Maybe the main characters move away and start a new life elsewhere. Maybe we see a romantic pair get together and stay together, bonded by the horrific experience they just had. How we do this depends entirely upon the characters that you've got in your roleplay. But no matter what, what happens at this point is safety is restored. Now, just like we talked about in our plot structure video, this is roleplay, so there is no need to plot every little detail. But when it comes to horror, I do recommend deciding exactly what's going to happen in the climax. Why? You want to make sure that whoever is playing your villain and whoever is playing the character that's supposed to thwart your villain are both 100% in agreement on what is going to happen. Nothing is going to kill your roleplay faster than realizing at zero hour the person playing your villain isn't willing to let go of their character yet. Or worse, they aren't willing to let go at all. So make sure when it comes to your horror plot that everyone is on the same page what's going to happen during the climax. Now, of course, this can all be fixed by making your villain an NPC that the moderators control or something like that, but this is roleplay, so that might not always be appropriate. You might really want a player playing your villain. So you'll need to consider your climax carefully. Redemption arcs don't really happen in horror, so you need a moment where the villain is defeated. So this is how we apply that five-stage plot structure to plotting horror in roleplay. Next week we're going to talk a little bit more about writing horror scenes specifically. To give you a little spoiler, tension has a lot to do with it, so I recommend to get ready for next week, watch my building tension video. I'm going to link that up in the card so that you guys can go check that out before the um, horror scene video drops next week. Thank you very much for watching to the end of the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to help my channel grow. If you'd like to support me, link to my Patreon is in the description, as well as my Amazon page to buy my book. Right here is where the names of my $5 and up patrons will go starting in November. And don't forget to make it a great day.